welcome. Raise Your Inner Game today. I'm David Levin. This is our Tuesday episode, so we're talking about sports and parenting teenage athletes. I have a special guest today, John Miller. John is the author of several books, some of which I helped him write. QBQ, The Question Behind the Question, was the big one that most people heard about, also flipping the switch. He was also an athlete in high school. We'll ask him about that. And he was a sports parent when his girls were younger. And he may be a sports grandparent by now. We'll have to ask him about that, too. John and I have been friends for almost 30 years now. He's an excellent talker, as you'll hear in a moment. He also has some great things to share about sports parenting. And I'm just tickled to have him join us. So now I bring you John G. Miller. John Miller. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Dave. Great to be here. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. So the topic is sports and sports parenting. So I thought we would start with your experience as an athlete in your younger days. I think as a parent, it can be hard to understand the extra pressure being an athlete puts on kids, especially if we haven't been there ourselves, like you know Margaret and I, who weren't in sports. Uh, and of course, I'm sure things are different now, but I just wonder if you can say a little bit about what it was like for you, the pressure of being a teenage athlete, and maybe also the kind of pressure you saw in your girls when yeah. they were competing. Sure. Well, my situation, I would say, is is a little unique, only because my dad was uh, Ivy League wrestling coach for many years. So at Cornell, I grew up literally on the Cornell wrestling mat. You know, he started coaching in 49 and retired in 1975 when I was 17. So, you know, through those formative years, I was immersed in the wrestling culture. Mm -hmm. So there was no other question or no option, nothing else I would ever do, but, but wrestle. So I grew up on the mat with high expectations, of course, by the wrestling community in Ithaca, New York, because my dad, Jimmy Miller, was a famous guy and a successful wrestler. So the situation was different, I'd say, than the average kid going out for a sport. Uh, I was expected to perform and yeah. to be great. And guess what, Dave? I wasn't. <laughs> well, there comes the question about the pressure. So first of all, I don't remember. You must have started early. You competed in high, in high school also. Yes. Oh, uh, You know, I was started in middle school and I, there was no elementary school wrestling back in the 60s. But by seventh grade, I was on the team and in eighth grade and ninth grade and uh, then moved into high school and wrestled there for the guy, a guy named Orlando Turco, who had actually wrestled for my dad at wow. Cornell 25 years earlier. So again, it was very much a, a, a culture of wrestling in Ithaca, New York and the Miller men and my two brothers, you know, Miller boys were immersed in it. So you, uh, you like you said, there was no question you were going to do it. I'm trying to figure out how to question, phrase this one. So normally, but if you got if you were good enough to get into college, you were already pretty serious and committed and all that. Did you wrestle in college because no. your dad was there? I mean, what no. was that transition like? Well, there's a there's, there's a bunch of stories in this in this um, wrestling background I have. One of them would be the most key story would be in my 11th grade year, so junior. I actually did not want to wrestle. And can you say the word heresy? <laughs> for, a, for a Miller boy to not wrestle. In fact, my dad and I had it out one night and it did not go well. Mm. And after the big argument in uh, the fall of 1974, I remember he came downstairs to my bedroom and this is when he taught me a strong principle. He said, you know, basically fine, if you're not gonna wrestle, you need to be the one to go tell Coach Turco. And that was the right move. He was, you know, mm -hmm. teaching me to be an adult. If you're not going to wrestle, just don't not show up. Go tell Mr. Turco that you are not wrestling this year. Because again, nobody would ever expect a Miller son to not wrestle. Mm -hmm. So I actually did not wrestle that year, my junior year. And then surprisingly, my senior year, I came back out. And this is when I learned I was a good salesperson, Dave. I, <laughs> I, I, lob I lobbied to be captain and I was actually voted captain after taking a year off. <laughs> so I was captain of the wrestling team. And I would say um, had some good leadership opportunities, but was not a champion or a winner. I mean, if I went eight and eight that year, I'd be surprised. It was probably not even that good. But then I got into college and wrestling was done for me. I was no longer going to participate or compete. 
But what I could do and was pretty, pretty good at it was coach. And that's usually the case. We even put that in one of our books. Uh, most coaches, great coaches were not great athletes. I know there's mm -hmm. exceptions. Like in the world of wrestling, people will say Dan Gable. You know, mm -hmm. he was the greatest wrestler the U.S. ever produced. And then he went on to coach great teams. But the average coach in any sport who's pretty good was not the best Com, uh, competitor competitor. Mm. So I was a mediocre wrestler who was a really fine middle school coach. So my junior and senior years at Cornell, I actually coached the local middle school under uh, coach Turco. So that was very fun for me. I was in charge coaching 30 kids, two years in a row. Mm. They did well. I had fun. And coach Turco one day told me, he said, I've never had such a young a group of young wrestlers come to me so well skilled because I knew the moves. I knew the stuff, mm -hmm. but as a competitor, I could not win. So I did not compete in college, but I coached. I don't think I ever knew that. Right. And wait, I did something else too. Beyond just coaching. I, yes, I did. Oh. I refereed my junior year in Cor at Cornell. I went out and uh, signed up and tried to be a, ref a referee my brother was already doing it. He was four years older and I got approved and I started uh, coaching or, or refereeing junior varsity matches in upstate New York. And then I actually, my second year, I was elevated to varsity high school matches. So at the age of 21, I was on the mat telling coaches who were arguing with my calls to sit down. It was a wonderful feeling. <laughs> That's the reason funny. I tell you this, this, this is the actual, this is the actual whistle I used in 1979, 1980. Jeez, you still so got I it. coached and I refereed, but I didn't compete in college. Okay. Well, certainly you had a lot of experience uh, besides the own, your own experience of the pressure of it with seeing the pressure of uh, being an athlete on your wrestlers. And I, again, this is a generation ago, almost two oh. generations, depending on how you count those. <laughs> Um, you're being what, kind. It was so then. It was more than forty years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. So your girls, of course. I don't remember. Did they all? Were they all in sports? I, I'm thinking of uh, Kristen and Tara. I guess I don't know the story of all your girls in sports. But what what sort of pressures did you see them dealing with a generation later, basically, when they started getting in there and being serious about it? I don't know if anything had changed. Uh, I think we've always had parents who push their kids into sports for the wrong reasons. Like one story I have where a guy wanted his son, who was a rather large young boy, 16 years old, to be a football player, but the kid wanted to be in the orchestra. And so the dad called him horrible names like Pansy. Oh, I, I'm not kidding. I got that from a client one day. I think that's in our parenting book. But to think that you might actually want your son to play football, and if he doesn't, you call him names. Then the real question is, why do you want your son to play football? Yeah. Are you are you trying to channel your unfulfilled goals and you know through him? Yeah. So our kids played sports, but they also did. This is important, and this was really a credit to Karen. She wanted them to do different things. You know, they all they all played piano. Now we kind of laugh about that. Why did they all take piano? Nobody can play today, but they all took piano. And Kristen, the oldest, was in drama, and that was her gift. Even though she had played soccer, she was better suited for being on the drama stage. And Tara played soccer, but she was better suited for being in the dance troupe, so she danced. And Michael played uh, baseball one year, and we laughed at that, and he never played again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it turned out he became the drama star at the local high school, too. And then Molly, that youngest of the first four, uh, she played soccer and basketball right through high school. In her senior year, she was captain of both teams. Mm. Then she went on to be an athletic trainer. But I think this is the most important point I can make here. We did not make them do anything they mm. didn't really want to do. Mm -hmm. We did not force them to be in a sport. Now, we may have said you need to complete a season or something like that, but there really wasn't any... Uh, John trying to live through his kids or or Karen as well. Karen, you know, played softball in the 70s, but that's about it. Yeah. So, you know, Michael, uh, you might remember the story. I took him to uh, wrestling practice at the age of about 12. And uh, he came home not liking it. He even told mom, he says, yuck, mom, those other boys are sweaty. <laughs> I always love that. You know, 
Right. So after three wrestling practices at age 10 or 12, he was done. Yeah. And within six months, he was playing, uh, you know, in Fiddler on the Roof on the on the, mm-hmm. the stage as a sixth grader at the high school. So he found his gift in music yeah. and drama. Yeah. No, that really is great. I, I, I totally... really think parents today have to always ask themselves, why are my kids in athletics? Am yeah. I really thinking they're going to get a scholarship? Oh, come on. Not many kids are going to get athletic scholarships. Yeah. Why are you doing this? And does yeah. the child want to? Don't, yeah. don't get me started, Dave. Yeah, no, no. I, I'm, I'm totally with you. Now, I, I, my memory's wrong with this. I totally thought Kristen was a gymnast. Oh, I didn't realize hers was soccer. She did gymnast, gymnastics, but way back uh, in the in the mid '90s, she was born in '83. So by by '96, she was done with gymnastics. So, oh, I didn't remember she, that. She did do it for a few years. Yes. So even in those cases, first of all, again, I just want to totally uh, echo and I totally agree with everything you said. It, it's super important to not push the kids to do it. But even when a kid wants to do it. Yeah. Um, and I'm, again, maybe maybe they're not thinking it's, you know, they're going to go pro or whatever, get a scholarship, but they just love it. Um, there's still a lot of extra load in being an athlete while you're a teenager, right? I mean, it's it's hard enough being a teenager. You got all the school loads and all the social right. sort of the right. learnings and you add onto that all the commitments around just if nothing else just the time but yeah. um so did you do you remember thinking back to when your girls were in that um i assume there was a period where they did still enjoy it they wanted to do it it wasn't like sure. like michael's you know to practice thing um <laughs> where they were sort of uh, sort of a w- conscious of the extra load they were carrying. It was, it was another thing to be dealt with. And was it a factor in the family? I, I don't think for, for our girls, and I, I got to be careful here. I don't come across like a haughty dad, but, you know, Kristen graduated in Tara, Kristen and Tara graduated number seven in their high school class and Molly graduated number four. Mm. So the bottom line here, they were always excellent students. And that's another discussion. We never pushed our kids to get A's. Mm. I recently found my Cornell transcripts, David, from 76 through 80. It's embarrassing. (laughs) I wasn't an A student. And we never pushed our kids toward perfection. We did say B's. B's are the standard. We want you to get B's. And then they all got A's. Mm. That's a parenting thing right there. But um, they all carried the load of being on a team and doing uh, academics. And then maybe they still did some music stuff. And they were maybe involved in church youth group. I don't remember any sense that, oh, gee, this is too much for us. It was just it was just what we were doing. We'd be off to a basketball game on a Tuesday night, not home till 9.30 p.m. And Molly somehow got her homework done. And the next day was up at the crack of dawn off to high school. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're when you're enjoying what you're doing, as you know, yeah. time flies by and you have the energy. <clears throat> So that, that's yeah. the question for parents: is is your child enjoying being on this team? Is it are they enjoying the sport? Are they are they enjoying being in athletics? Uh, back yeah. to my back to my wrestling background. As a child, again, the Miller men were always supposed to wrestle. I mean, there was just no question about that. My father never really encouraged us to do anything else. But I do remember my eighth grade year. I almost went out for track. Now, would I have been good at track? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too short. My legs are too heavy. But I almost went out for track. It seemed so exciting and so intriguing. I wanted to do something else. But in the end, that whole wrestling culture of the Miller family shut me down and Mm. I stayed in wrestling. Mm. And wrestling taught me a lot. Taught me a lot about, you know, a lot of character kind of building stuff because on that mat, you're all by yourself. But, But in hindsight, I wish in high school and middle school, I had tried other sports. Yeah, sure. That actually is a good segue to the next question I wanted to ask you. Um, You know, we are, I want to say, obviously, maybe it's not obvious for everybody, but it seems to me the reason we want our kids to be in sports, assuming they want to, is because of the lessons that come from it. It's not it's not the scholarship. It's not the pro career. It's the life lessons that come from being there. So uh, the questions I have for you is um, what sort of things did you remember getting from it? Well, how they served you? And, and same question for the girls. Well, let, let me just say it this way, if I could. I've had this debate with some parents, uh, even a good client, a client you would know. Uh, I think youth sports is not about winning. What? <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, everybody would agree, five-year-olds, you know, you're probably not going to keep score. Karen and I just a month ago went to uh, 
a basketball game for a little Wyatt. He's six on a Saturday morning. Wow. And it's hilarious to watch a bunch of six-year-olds chase a basketball around the court. I mean, the girls are taller than him. I mean, he's very short. And uh, they didn't even keep score. The, the clock was zero zero the whole the whole time. That that's great. Yeah. But I even think up through into middle school, there are other lessons in sports. Um, teamwork, learning the skills of the sport, uh, aerobic exercise, you know, um, commitment, showing up on time. You got practice at six o'clock. You show up at six o'clock. That kind of thing. Uh, not you know the the opposite maybe of entitlement. You don't get to always play just because you are the best the best nine year old uh, soccer player. Everybody gets to play. So the, I have Karen and I have developed very strong values about youth sports. Now of course you get to high school, college, and the pros. It's about winning and losing. But boy oh boy, I've got stories in nineteen you know two thousand uh, two thousand six getting on, on a basketball coach at a middle school game at Michael's school. He was playing a bas basketball for one season. I know I'm all over the map here because I got so many kids, you know, seven kids. <laughs> but Michael played basketball for the middle school and our team was ahead by 22 points with, you know, a minute left and the coach was still playing the starters. And I came out of the crowd and I went up to the coach and I said, and I pointed at Michael and his friends sitting on the bench. I said, you play these boys right now. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a assertive driver style guy and I could not stand anymore what the coach was doing. He had to win the game. Eighth grade basketball at a private mm -hmm. school, a Christian school. What are you doing making sure we win by 22? Let everybody play. Oh, yeah. So when it comes to why put kids in youth sports, I really do think it is about, again, that skill building, that teamwork, that commitment level, responsibility, the exercise, uh, building relationships. You, know, you make friends in sports. Molly today still is friends with some of the girls from her teams 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I think it depends a lot on the kid too. I, for me, I mean, I just, I did very little. I mean, I wrestled one year in high school. I still don't know why. <laughs> it didn't you wrestled? Go you don't remember that I wrestled oh, for I one year. That. I think it was, I think it was my sophomore or junior year. Um, I am the absolute last person to ever for it to make sense to do that. I have no, I have no competitive drive. I was just, <laughs> but I, but one year in high school. Um, but what I was going to say was um, another thing I really think it does is it, especially if a kid's a little bit more shy, you know, maybe introverted, it really expands their sense of what's possible for them, you know, mm -hmm. to, to have a particular skill, like a measurable skill, even if it's just how many laps can you do, you yeah. know, um, uh, that reminds me of the Rocky scene, right? I start out, this is all I can do. I actually right. work on it and now I can do this much. That's yeah. just that, just that basic sort of concept. It can be really transformational, sure. especially for a young person. I think, especially in those, again, those teenage years, we're talking about grade school stuff. But when you get into the into the high school and you got so many issues going on with, you know, uh, just coming into your own as an adult, as a young adult, right, um, right, to to have that confidence, that underlying confidence, I can do things, I can do yep. hard things, that's just so helpful. Yep, yep. Well, it's funny about the whole wrestling experience I had. I didn't want to wrestle, I just didn't know it. Oh yeah. And the reason I mention that is, you know, if I was a eight and eight kind of wrestler each year. It's because of a couple of reasons. Number one, I probably wasn't built for wrestling, but uh, I wasn't built for track. But I mean, you know, wrestlers that really do well tend to have a muscular upper body and light and, and lighter legs because you got to have your weight in the right places. You know, if you're going to wrestle at 132, I'd wrestle a guy that's 132, but he'd be six inches taller than me because he had his weight distributed differently, you know. Oh. But but anyway, uh, the reason I mention this right now is I, I failed in wrestling because I didn't want to put the work in. I didn't want to lift weights. I didn't like running, you know, running, jogging before practice, two, three miles, like the other kids were doing who went on to excel. I didn't want to do the work. That's one reason I, I never, never excelled in wrestling. Yeah. Was, as a referee, you know, I learned that <laughs> business. And as, and, and as a coach, I had that drive. You said you don't have any drive. I know that's not true, but I had that drive to be the best youngest referee in Southern New York, which I was for a while. I had that drive to be a great coach and teach my kids their skills. 
But on the mat itself, I didn't have the drive to win. I didn't want to work for it. So I think as a parent, you really need to ask yourself, is my child in something that he doesn't or she doesn't really want to be in? Because that's exactly where I was with wrestling. And again, last comment, the Miller culture in the 60s and 70s was so unique that I, I almost I couldn't break out of it. Yeah. All we did was wrestle. Yeah, that's interesting. By the way, I didn't mean to say I have no drive. I don't have the kind of drive face to face with somebody to to dominate them. You know I'm, what I mean? I'm just like, I'm so conflict averse. The last thing I could imagine is actually, you know, and you know, so wrestling was the worst sport for me, right? I mean, a team sport, maybe. It's so right? personal. I can, I can do with the other guys, but me and one other person, uh, I got yeah. no chance. <laughs> All right. That makes sense. That yeah, makes funny. Sense. Anyway, you know, this has been really great. Um, I love the the points uh, for parents. Maybe we can just kind of sum them up as we as we finish up, the big things I heard were not, you know, not forcing your kids to do it, being super clear why you want them to do it. If you do let them, let them seek it there themselves. Um, you also mentioned, and this is a great point, um, not letting it, even if they're totally into it, not letting it be their whole life, making sure they do other things like you right. said, the music and the drama. Um yeah. I mean, if you have the time and the money and you can you can afford a few other activities, we I think our kids were pretty balanced. Yeah. So but we let, we did let them drop out of things when they, when we felt they you know, like the piano thing. They all played piano. And finally, we just said, OK, you're all done taking piano lessons. Yeah. It's not working. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, I love that. I mean, that that core um, just being attuned enough to your kids to just be able to say, that you know what, this is not not good for you. I mean, I, I don't need you to be a piano player, you know? Well, um, I'm going to make another point, Dave. You know, my interviews are always a little wild and chaotic. Uh, I met a mom down in Mississippi who came up to me and said, you know, I really appreciate your, your accountability message. Um, I want to tell you about my daughter. I said, yeah, what's going on? Well, she's a, she's a gymnast. And I'm really frustrated because she just can't, she just can't get her backflip. <laughs> And I've, I've thought about that for years. Mm. Why was the mom more concerned than the daughter about the daughter mastering a backflip? Mm. You've heard of stage moms. Yeah. And stage parents. She was definitely a stage parent. She was more, I'm going to say the word, obsessed with her daughter performing well than her daughter was. She just was so frustrated because her daughter didn't care as much as she cared about her mastering her backflip. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, parents, you can't be more concerned about your kid's performance than they are. Yeah. If, if they're not concerned, then I guess maybe they shouldn't be in the sport. Yeah, 100 percent. I, uh, you know, I talk to uh, coaches in the sports academy work and it, it's never the top thing we're talking about. We're always talking about their players and the team and the mental game stuff they're doing. Um, but at some point it ends up sneaking out. They'll go, you know, really, my biggest problem with the mental game is the parents. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and, and then at that point, I'll say, well, by the way, um, one thing you might not know is that for every kid that goes through the course, they, the, they also get access to the parents edition for their parents to also learn some self-regulation and right. self-awareness around that. But it's so true. So true. You know, the gentleman uh, who you've met, I believe, Terry Talley, who creates videos oh, yeah. in, the, uh, in the production world, of videos and such stuff. He, a few years ago, did commercials for uh, re recruiting referees because nobody wanted to be a referee because the parents oh. were even alive. They actually had to be creating commercials to put somewhere on the web to get referees to come join them and you know, kids, people to sign up to be a ref because nobody wants to do it. Why would you? And the angry parents are screaming at them in the, from the stands. It's, it's terrible. And then, of course, we model that for the children, but now we're getting into parenting. Yeah, 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 no. So, all right. Any uh, sort of last thoughts? You know, you think back to yourself as a parent, you see other parents out there, any just things you wish you'd known or wish other parents knew? Just final thoughts for sports parenting, folks, as we uh, finish up. Well, you know, because you, you co-wrote the QBQ book with me, the core message there is you can't change another person. So I think it comes back to the parents making sure they know why they have their child in sports. What are you trying to accomplish by having your child at, in soccer or basketball at a young age? Just, just know why you're doing it. That's all. And be honest with yourself. If you're really trying to do it because you failed in that sport, boy, you better take them out. 
but if he's in it for exercise and to learn teamwork and to have fun and, and make new friends, that's a good thing. So I really think parents need to look hard at themselves and understand why they have their child in any sport. Beautiful. Thank you, John. Great to talk to you as always. Thanks, Appreciate Dave. It. Keep up the good work, my friend. You too. All right. We are back. That's fun. Again, John and I have been friends for a very long time. I think you can tell. And it's fun to realize the things we still don't know about each other. He didn't wrestle in college. I had that wrong. And I did wrestle in high school. Somehow he didn't know that. And his kids ended up being more into drama and arts than sports. I really didn't realize that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. His big points about not pushing your kids to be in sports, to think about why you want them to do it and so on, is so important. Kim John Payne talks about the same things. Also to have them have some balance in their lives, not have it be all about sports. John and Karen had great instincts about that, which I didn't appreciate before. And about the whole purpose of youth sports, really, which I think is especially commendable given his background and the very different attitude in his family growing up. Anyway, that is it for this episode, Good Sports Parenting, with John Miller, author of QBQ, The Question Behind the Question. To find out more about John, visit qbq.com. The link is here and in the show notes. If you like what you heard, please tell your friends and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Every positive review helps more folks find the show and get help with their mental game. For more mental game goodness, please join our free community, the Raise Your Inner Game Charging Station. Click the link here or go to raiseyourinnergame.com, scroll down to the bottom, sign up there. It's totally free. You'll be in and you will love it. Either way, thank you for listening. Keep up the good work. We'll see you next time.